Welcome to Roll Call, the number one Birmingham Roller podcast, bringing together Birmingham Roller fans from all over the world. Good morning. Welcome to welcome to Roll Call. Uh, it's been a while since we've done a a podcast. Um, of course, you know we're into fly season, so uh, mm-hmm. everybody here is involved in flying. Jerry just did his his uh, regional fly, and I just finished mine, so we didn't have any time to do uh, to do podcast. But we're back. So, and our first guest, um, you know, coming back is uh, uh, Stephen Butt. Uh, yes. I'm thinking Butler, man, Steve. <laughs> Sorry about that, Stephen. But go ahead, tell, go go ahead and tell us about you, uh, uh, Stephen. Uh, I'm Stephen Russell. I'm from Southern California. Um, I was born in Hartford, Connecticut, but I was raised in Pasadena, California. Um, I got into pigeons at the age of uh, seven years old. Um, I saw my first suicide, you know, at seven, and I thought that. <laughs> The most amazing thing I ever seen. So, I've <laughs> uh, been into pigeons. You know, I loved pigeons before I even knew about rollers. You know, I used to go to Avero Street when I was a kid with my aunt and catch pigeons out there and and hold them until we left. You know, yeah. and then you know, then finally I got into pigeons through a neighbor. Um, and uh, eventually, I end up in the music business. Uh, I played high school football at Pasadena High. Um, I was in a group called Five of a Kind out of Pasadena. Uh, we got a record deal. Uh, we came out as troop. Had um, three, four number one records, like six top tens. Uh, I v- eventually became a songwriter, producer, producing records like Take You Down for Chris Brown, uh, No Air for Jordan Sparks and uh, Chris Brown, just co-writing on hundreds of songs man you know and at the same time still keeping my birds and still making sure that uh when the time is right i can plant my seed again right on right on yeah wow so yeah for for um some of the people that don't know you know steve just mentioned he was in a group uh uh uh, called troop um and i mean i remember him (laughs) you know (laughs) you guys were kicking man so yeah thank um, you man so we're, you know, we're. It, I'm sure a lot of people that will be watching the podcast will, will recognize you, and they'll recognize your music. Um, so, so uh, do you live in California now? Um, uh, no, I just relocated to Texas. I've been in Desoto, Texas, now for uh, two years, exactly uh, last month. Um, so I'm I'm enjoying the Texas uh, flavor now. I joined right. the Texas boys. Right on, right on, <laughs> right on. So you you're still in the you're in the music scene in uh in in uh Texas? Uh well, I don't really know much about the music scene here in Texas, but um I still release my own music. I have my own media company. I do short films. Mm-hmm. And uh I still release my own music and stuff and Troop is still touring and stuff like that. So, and we right. just released a new single called Lady in My Life actually that's um doing really well at radio right now so i'm still doing a little bit you know all right all right yeah i, I saw i saw you uh uh um i think it was last year you you had a a nice loft built man that's yes, that sir. thing is awesome man didn't you Thank get uh what's the name from uh la to go out there and get it get it put together yeah my man barnett, barnett uh, yeah. Brulee, yeah Brulee came and stayed with me for almost a month 
and help me build my loft and get everything together. You know, he, he knows uh, how serious I am about it. Man, it's a beautiful you know? loft, man. I think Thank we, you, man. He's, the setups for like about four or five kit boxes, no? Yeah, well, I got, uh, I have four, well, I got two big kit boxes that hold like 60 birds. And then I have uh, four main kit boxes that hold like 35 to 40 birds a piece. Mm -hmm. um, so it's pretty cool, man, you know. Yeah, right on, right on. Yeah, I, yeah. I know Burnett, so. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, every, everybody that's been to California knows Burnett. That's got <laughs> yeah, that's one of my mentors, man. Uh, right on, right on. Yeah, I, 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 I ran into, I was fortunate enough to run into him uh, early early in my pigeon career once i found out that you know that it was this this cult thing man all these people <laughs> all these shows and trophies and you know i just i couldn't believe the world that i entered into but i met barnett doing that so and he's been so helpful as uh, a mentor in just how to care for the birds and train the birds he's one of the best and uh, I've been really, really successful with maintaining my health and just the stuff that I got from Barnett has just been so helpful to me, man. You know, as far as my relationship with my rollers, he, right. he was tremendous in that. Right. Yeah, it's not it's not always just about uh, uh, opening the kit box. Huh? There's a lot more to uh -huh. it. A lot more to it, man. A lot more to it. And I got that from Barnett. You know, I went to his house one day, man. When I was first, you know, like I said, you know, well, let me go back. Um, I uh, I was on tour all this time out of high school, so I, there was no way that I could be in pigeons. But I used to catch pigeons in hotels and shit, like in, uh, <laughs> yeah. me, yeah, in Hawaii. You know, we go to Hawaii. I remember catching pigeons out there. Yeah, my yeah. Was like, and how you catch pigeons like that? You know, so anyway, when we stopped touring and everything changed, I moved to Compton with my wife, my then wife, because she's from Compton. And I uh, I bought this expensive Rottweiler, so I was looking for a pet store to get food from, some Ukanuva, some some rich food, whatever. Right. So anyway, I ran into Boons, man. I ran into Dim just driving around. So I saw all these pigeons in the front of the store, and immediately the little boy came back out like, oh, shit, there's pigeons, you know. <laughs> so. Uh, anyway, I started buying pigeons from Booms just to have pigeons again. I built this raggedy thing behind my garage, you know. You know. Anyway, I was still like a little kid with it, even though I was in my early thirties. So anyway, I I was at Booms one day and I saw this this blue check, this black check. It was really nice looking to me, so I bought it. And as I was paying for it, Dem said, "There's the guy whose bird that is right there," and it was Craig Wiggs from ICRC. Mm -hmm. and that was uh, I met him I introduced myself to him and he invited me over his house and that was the first time I had seen a loft that looks like a house that had lights and nice. loft stalls with band right. numbers written on the loft with bands I was like what is this you know a, I, a I professional level uh. <laughs> listen I had no idea it was like that but I've been a professional in everything that I've done in my life so okay. when I saw that, I was like, okay, Pigeons is on this kind of a level. And then he <laughs> taught me about the, the competition, you know, my birds against this guy's birds. Once I knew I can compete against you, it was a wrap. Yeah. <laughs> Everything changed, you know. <laughs> and I still didn't know that there were pigeons better than other pigeons at that time. I was just, I hadn't been to flies yet. So I started hanging with Craig like on a daily basis, man. I was just like a kid in a candy store. Every day I leave the gym in the morning, I would stop at his house, watch the birds and just just get familiar with, with the way he's raising pigeons. Because as a kid, we keep them in a dark box for three days, let them out. They come back. We get to see them spin. It was no group pigeons. It was, right. it was just none of that. Right, so right. anyway, I was just with Craig and he started taking me to flies. He was in this 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 group called mm -hmm. ICRC, Kevin McCray, Keith London, uh, um, come on, Steve, everybody, Juan Navarro, uh, Eddie Scott. Uh, uh, I mean, everybody, bro. Uh, uh, Derek McGee, everybody was in this club. So I started, uh, Rayvon, rest in peace, my uncle Rayvon Hall, Bruce Hall, 
mm. uh, Terry Duncan. It was so many guys in the club. So anyway, I was fortunate enough to just be able to hang out with them. So I hung out with the club for a year, almost two years before I even started to get birds that could kid and all that because I was so fascinated about winning trophies. I did get in and start winning trophies immediately. Mm -hmm. um, and I would dedicate all my points to ICRC. And that's how I got in their favor. And then once uh, it was time for me to, you know, I wanted to get in the club. They wouldn't let me in the club unless yeah. I flew. You know, they was like, no, nah, you can't get in the club unless you fly. Got to fly. So instead of being insulted by that, I just started really paying attention. I started talking to um, um, Arnold Jackson. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I started talking, and this is before I got into my line of pigeons that I currently have created now. I started talking to Arnold Jackson, and he started telling me about it competition. Mm -hmm. He started telling me about what pigeons to look for, what traits to look for, where they're flying in the front, the middle, the back, that they're born with this. <laughs> yeah. If every pigeon is not going to fly to the front. I mean, he, Arnold Jackson was the best kit competition teacher that I ever had. Yeah. Bless his heart. I love him to this day. What's up, Arnold? I love you. Um, and once I got that, I, with the birds that I was able to get collecting from the guys in RCRC, I was able to fly and score and get in the club. Right. right. So from there, um, it just got more and more, I got more and more exposure with other guys' kits. It, and uh, in um, Marino Valley, we started just, I started going to World Cup flies. I just, I just really got involved and blown away with the, the pigeon itself. And I started noticing birds that work harder than other birds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I started to notice the birds that didn't look appealing to me, even if they were 30 feet. If it, it was something in me soul wise that wasn't moved by a pigeon unless it was a certain thing. Right. And, and I would notice some pigeons would roll and I would hear guys screaming and I didn't even like it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> There would be a bird that nobody says nothing about, but it was so short and fast, it'll make my stomach give me butterflies. You know, yeah, like, yeah. what was that? <laughs> nobody is saying nothing about that little bird that's really short in there. Right, you know? right. So right. anyway, once I started noticing that, that there were pigeons that performed better than others, I started paying attention to that quality where I went. And then I started inquiring the birds and where the birds came from and then it just went from there man i went through my stage of spending a lot of money on birds that were no good that amounted yeah. to nothing i hold no grudges all of it was a lesson because i'm the shit now i yeah. think i'm unbeatable at my best even yeah. though i'm not even a popular right. pigeon guy yet right, right 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 um, uh i paid my dues in it and i was able to be befriended by some really great pigeon guys man yeah. who yeah. put a lot of work in with the birds man who who taught me the difference between the mindset of the average pigeon guy and the guy that's elite in his mind that wants to win based on how he's breeding what he's breeding mm -hmm. you get what i'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah totally, a total man. another level just a total other level than what I was exposed to early on and and I st and those were the people that I really really uh invested my heart and my my true money and investment into and to this day man you know I'm preparing right now for the first time cuz I started moving around a lot my mom passed and that threw me off with music and the birds you know so for it's been 6 7 years that I've been a zombie just yeah. existing, you know, and I'm, I finally come out of that and um, I'm training my birds now and, you know, just seeing, I'm so happy that I was smart enough to trust my instinct with the pigeon because to this day, I'm seeing the same quality that I invested in Yeah. when yeah. I locked in, you right, know, yeah. so right. I'm so happy that I locked into the right thing. So now it's just about me training and getting ready for these flies, you know, because I'm getting yeah. ready to compete as, at the highest level that I can at this point yeah. to make my name and my legacy in the game. Well, you, I mean, you, you're, you seem excited about it, Stephen. And that's, oh, yeah. that's a very important part. I mean, look, you were in a club with some big hitters. 
you know, I mean, well-known guys <laughs> um, from, I mean, no matter where you're from, those right. names, you know, those names. And, yeah. and, and, you know, I mean, they're, they're not just out there. They are, yeah. <laughs> you know, we know that flu, yeah, fantastic pitches and that whole group, you know, I mean, uh, you know, we, we've had Keith on a couple of times, as a matter of fact, yeah, Keith on as a co-host and, and, and Keith, well, you, he was in the club with you guys. He gave us a similar story. You know, that's how he started, yeah. how he got yes. bought in, you know. Um, yeah. um, so those those guys, uh, as a matter of fact, speaking of Eddie Scott, I just met him at the AARC. Okay. Um, um, uh, picnic recently. And I was, I was thinking, I mean, I'd heard his name a thousand times. Right. right. I'm from Louisiana, Stephen. So I grew up with a, one of my best friends. His father name was Eddie Scott. His name was Eddie Scott. Oh, okay. And, and, uh, Eddie Scott moved to California. So I'm thinking, huh, <laughs> are these right, the same right. people? But, right, right. But, but, you know, um, like you, I think you started off like most people do, you know, we start off, you know, with just pigeons hanging around. And yeah. and when we finally run into people who really know what they're doing, um, uh, I mean, it's a fantastic thing. And it's good, yeah. to see, it's good to see how excited you are about it, you know? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, well, to, to, help, I'm very excited about it. You know, it's, yeah. like I said, it's been a long time. I, I was fortunate enough to have a, a younger guy, a young friend. He's like a younger brother to me. His name is uh, DJ Bees. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he was around, he was around me when he was a kid. H him and me and his big cousin were best friends. And he used to hang around us when we had pigeons. Like I said, we would build our own little pigeon stuff. We were pigeon right. dudes back then. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, so anyway, I was so fortunate and blessed to have him at a time where I just didn't have the mind for the pigeons or anything because he took my birds. I convinced him to get rid of all of this stuff that he had at his house. Uh -huh. Take my birds at your house. I can't deal with them right now, but breed you a family out of my birds. And I, you know, for once, I've tried that before to help a few people out, but you know, when you give people stuff, no matter how good it is, they think it's garbage because you're giving it. Yeah, like with yeah. pigeons, you can't you can't really be a god person in pigeons to everybody because it doesn't match. Because yeah. people immediately either want to take advantage of you or doubt mm -hmm. what you're, the the gift that you're offering. So anyway, he was I was fortunate enough to have him. He took the pigeons. He took them for several years. He kept all of the birds that I told him were the most Please don't, you know, treat these like this, you know. Mm -hmm. Long story short, he kept my family alive, man. So to this day, I have grandkids out of my main cock that I started my family with, bro. Wow. You know? Nice. And and, so, and you talk you talk about um your family, and, and we all know that, you know, to get to the point where you could say your family, man, that takes a long time, you know. Um, long time, bro. Tell us a little bit of 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 the what your history or based on what you you yeah. decided. You're 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 at that stage that you already recognize that you know there's way beyond than just flying pigeons in the backyard. Yeah. There's competitions and there's a lot of uh, carpooling going from house to house to see these guys that are you know, competing yeah. against each other to be the best. What, what, yeah. what, what did you go for, man? Who did you go see? Who did you think of to 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 get started on what you will one day become your own family, what you got now? Okay, it's I'm going to tell you what started it all. Uh, a great friend of mine, Juan Navarro, mm -hmm. he saw the same thing you see now, that excitability and saw that I really wanted to compete at a different level than where I was being mentored at. And he pulled me to the side and he said, Steve, you're never going to be Michael Jordan on the Clippers. Mm -hmm. And I, I just accepted what he said. And what that did was really make me pay attention to the birds. Mm -hmm. I took it to the birds, like the actual pigeons, right? So I started paying attention to the money that I was spending and who I was spending it with once he said that. 
and it, 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 what he did was he took the veil. You know, when you first come in under somebody, they're your God. You think they're the greatest because they're teaching you something you never saw before, but you have no idea what level they are in the game per se, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's not taken away from anybody. I love everybody that helped me. But the fact of the matter is I was starting at ground level one, which was great. Mm -hmm. And I was introduced by people like Juan Navarro, Keith London, you know, I I used to hang at Keith London's house because I liked the way he trained his pigeons. Mm -hmm. I liked the way his pigeons out of everybody's birds that I saw, Keith London knew how to fly his pigeons right in your face and he would not DQ. He Mm -hmm. might DQ one time, man, but Keith London flew his pigeons right in your face and you would see 15, you know, I'm not going to give I'm not going to give him 16, but you would see 15, <laughs> 15 and a half going at the same time. You know, I saw Keith London kick ass, bro. Yeah. Excuse yeah. my language. I saw Kevin McRae with my own eyes. You know, people talk when at your house. A lot of pigeon guys don't have a lot of etiquette. They yeah. like to have conversations when they're at people's house. I never liked that. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I saw Kevin McRae with my own eyes shut a, a backyard of 50 guys quiet nice. <laughs> nobody talking bro wow. and <laughs> when I saw that that was my pinnacle of what I my standard of what I wanted to be and that started me spending money with different people mm-hmm. and I didn't know then that getting pigeons from everybody still wasn't the answer I just started trying to collect the best of what I saw and where I was headed long story short I went through Juan Navarro, Kevin McRae. I never bought pigeons from Keith London. I got a lot of, I got a lot of uh, uh, learning from Keith. Oh. Keith taught me. Keith Keith London helped me to be who I am today. Just as a few more people, I'm gonna name uh, Juan Navarro. Um, I got a call from my friend, uh, a guy that I met just doing the pigeon life named snipe he called me and said hey man jerry higgins is looking for you mm-hmm. now i was introduced to jerry higgins name by the person who introduced me to pigeons mm-hmm. so i had always heard jerry higgins jerry higgins so in my mind of course now this name has been built up to jerry higgins pigeons whether i had him or not <laughs> his name or whatever you know you but anyway long story short right. I went to a guy named, I found out that I was being cheated and I was spending money on bad birds. Uh Uh So I confronted the person in a gentleman way by simply saying, I'm getting rid of these, some of these birds. And I was told to test this. Mm -hmm. And I tested it. I said, Hey, I'm getting rid of some of these birds. Would you like them back? Would you right. like some of the main ones back that you pushed, you know, that you sold to me? And he said, man, I don't want that shit. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I lost it a little bit and I started slamming pigeons. I just started killing everything that I had. Immediately, my, one of my friends that was there, you know, I had Joe Bowerbirds at the time, Juan Navarro, so I was killing everything. So my friend Bobby Clayton, he started. <laughs> he started saying, no, 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 give me that stuff, don't do it. You know, so he, <laughs> he stopped me from killing everything, but that was the turning point for me. I I looked in the uh the the MBRC mm-hmm. and I found a guy named Jesse Comer. Mm-hmm. Nicest person I ever met, sweetest guy I'd ever met in pigeons. And everybody was nice, but this guy who was special, he didn't want to sell me his pigeons. That attracted me because I couldn't give him my money. He was right. like, no, no, no. He said, take these. Take these four pair. Don't tell nobody. Just take these four pair. Breed out of them. Start you a new family. I'm gonna. I'm gonna start you with the best. I'm gonna help you since you went through that. That's mm-hmm. what he told me. Mm-hmm. So anyway, that wasn't successful because I didn't feel like they were mine. So I had like ten grand. You know, I had got a publishing deal or something. Yeah. So I went. I, I told Jesse that I wanted to buy a dog. So I went. I got. I got to his house faking like I wanted the dog. So I had a pocket full of money. So <laughs> I had all my cages in the car, everything. He had no idea I was coming to get him that day. So when he when he showed me the puppy, I pulled the money out. 
Uh-huh. Right. And so uh-huh. I was counting what he wanted for the dog. And I said, hey, man, you sure you don't have no pair you want to show me? Yeah. <laughs> so he started pulling out pairs, bro. He pulled out, he pulled out about 10 pair, 10, 11 pair of pigeons, man. And I bought all that shit, bro. Yeah, I bought yeah. everything I could buy with that money from Jesse. And when I tell you, bro, my life changed. Buying those Johnny Smith pigeons, mm-hmm. buying those Milton Rudd pigeons, buying those, um, the other guy from San Diego, darn it. Anyway, John, John Jones. Those, I didn't get any John Jones at that time. I didn't get to him yet. Okay. But buying all of those Jerry Higgin bloodline pigeons that close, when I tell you I went from seeing one pigeon here happy over one pigeon to seeing several pigeons drop my whole life changed bro when wow. i got the when i got the birds from jesse comer my life changed mm-hmm. that's where everything changed from there from getting the pedigrees and going through the pedigrees i saw where all the heat was coming from so wow. i went straight to johnny smith and jerry higgins right straight on. to jerry and 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 at the same time he wanted to meet me because I took a picture with him and he was like, Who is that guy? For some reason, I don't know. Favor. Uh, you uh, know. Uh. Anyway, <laughs> I get to Jerry Higgins personally, bro. He takes a liking to me. Uh me and a good friend of mine, my buddy, he he comes out of a situation, starts this magazine called Bobby Wilson. He starts yeah, QSDC. Yeah. Right, right. And I've always wanted to do a magazine to myself never even knowing how to start so when i saw him do that i immediately approached him like yo i want to be down he gave me a stock in the magazine i was a part of qsdc so i went around with my relationships and started interviewing the people that i could get to just to help blow the magazine up and um from there getting with jerry higgins honestly jerry higgins and norm reed learning the pigeons and learning what I want and how to breed. Norm Reed taught me so much about breeding pigeons, man. Mm -hmm. And he Mm -hmm. taught me so much about feather quality and how to, he he just gave me so many good seeds. And ultimately Jerry Higgins and Johnny Smith with this family that I entered into, Johnny Smith, he honestly knows more than Jerry about Jerry's own birds, to be honest. Yeah. Johnny Smith, he really, really brought me in and helped me to develop a very, very nice thing with what I had already spent my money on now that I'm in the game, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And to this day, um, that's my family. I, I kept Juan Navarro. He had some very, very, very special. I don't care, you know, I don't care what nobody said, you know. Juan Navarro is always going to be tapped in to give me the little extra <laughs> you right. know, Juan right. Navarro is my secret weapon. You know, um, John Mesquita, uh, uh, I got with him to get me some outcrosses. Once I built my family, um, I started in 2003. Mm-hmm. Um, a pair of Jesse Comer gave me. I bred a pigeon that was so incredible. I called him Kobe. Mm-hmm. So I took Kobe. I noticed out of that family there were several birds that were really awesome out of this one pair. It was like the first pair where everything that I was seeing was bad, mm-hmm. you know, fastest, I mean, fast birds. So I based my whole family off of Kobe and his full sister. Right I got a couple birds from Norm Reed that mm-hmm. when I crossed the Kobe, it was amazing. It was, it was just amazing. So that's where I started. Everything from was my Higgins, Norm, Blinn with my Houghton in there. You know, Uh and then I also experimented with my Jerry Higgins straight to Juan Navarro explosive, you know. Um, So within my family that I've created, I created a straight Norm Reed line of what I call black sky dancers that were really excellent performers. So as I was building my focus family with Kobe and his sister and and how I built that, I was also dealing with this norm thing that I knew I could always cross back. So I made sure that I had my black family going. And um, I I had early on, I took one of my best Norm Reed Cox 165 to a hen from um, um, Terry um, Duncan. I, I can't think of his name right now. Marshall Duncan. Uh, um, no, he's he's uh, he um, he does Falcons now. Oh, okay. Uh, 
um, anyway, he he had Higgins pigeons. So anyway, I took uh, I made a line. I made a, a a different family out of my norm to Higgins again, but this was more my chocolate chip. You know, my white model, black model, yeah, but yeah. it's Higgins. So I'm saying that to say that the whole time this all these years I've had three different things going that were concentrated and focused on with the same love and focus so that now I could even start crossing my own things to make, you know, I'm still within my yard doing this thing and it's working perfect, man. Nice. I'm so excited to fly some kids right now. So many people been talking shit. You know, I, yeah. I can't wait to I can't wait to compete, man. Um, you just have no <laughs> yeah, idea. A lot, a lot of those guys that you mentioned, man. A lot of those guys you mentioned, you know, they got a lot of speed in their birds, man. So I could just imagine what you're putting together, man. Killer, huh? <laughs> I'm so yeah. excited, bro. I'm so excited because I, I the last few flies that I've seen, I. I noticed that more guys, there are more of the guys who just like to see the birds move than they are to see a certain quality of the birds. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, that's exciting because I'm not far, I'm not going in that lane. I'm not on that street. Yeah. Right. So yeah. for me, that's exciting. I'm, I, I'm ready to compete on a high level for these next few years, these next five years, I'm going to go hard. My whole goal to move into Texas was to win the World Cup, and that's my plan. Nice. So I stayed here first, you know, and that's not being cocky. That's just, that was my personal goal was to move here away from Falcons mm -hmm. and win the World Cup with what I had put together yeah. as a family, you know. Yeah, I've been, well, I've, I've, I've been, I mean, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. I, I mean, I mean, you've had success in your, in your life, so you, you know what it takes. It does take focus. There's no doubt about yeah. it. You know? yeah. And you have to know what you want. Like, yeah. If you don't have a goal, um, you're, you're, you're shot from the start. You know, you have to have a goal. If you don't know, this is one of the questions I always ask anytime we do an interview, what, what is a proper roller to you? You know, what, what do you mm -hmm. see as a, a proper roller? Okay. <clears throat> okay. For me, my personal personal taste the bird the bird that i'm gonna choose as my favorite in your team mm -hmm. is gonna be that pigeon that operates from the front middle of the team he doesn't sway the team either way but yet he triggers the birds to move mm -hmm. he doesn't fly from the back he's not a follower waiting for somebody else he's an initiator mm -hmm. um I love for a bird to start the roll and finish the roll in the same exact direction as the kit was going. I love breaks. I love when a bird can can go really, really fast and stop at a dime. Uh, my favorite bird is never going to roll until he reaches that position in the team again. He's never going to, even if he rolls 40 feet, he's never, one of my favorite pigeons is the elephant man. He would come out of there, man, 40, almost 50 feet, and the kit is up here, he would take off, man. And he would fly directly back to that freaking kit. He wasn't thinking about rolling again. He would wait until he found his position. He would weave her in the kit. And as soon as he get back to his main position, he starts him to bust again and he does his 40 again. He didn't give a shit. I don't care what you're doing. This is what I'm doing. And I'm going back to initiate it again. Right, right. And those are my favorite pigeons. I love style. Um, I don't mind birds that are deeper being less. I love quality, so I don't want to say less in quality, but the quality can lessen in a pigeon that works really, really hard. And and he holds his pigeon, he holds his roll all the way tight. And at the end, you know, I, I'm going to give him some credit right. with how right. hard you right. you all know what a hard working pigeon right. looks like. Oh, so yeah. I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be brutal and act like the bird is not working hard as he is because I respect the pigeon, but my ideal pigeon is a pigeon that is an initiator and he does not miss points when it comes to scoring. He's going to, he or she is going to make her way back to score with that kit. The mindset of her is to do it with the team, not an individual and you see that when you're raising your babies, you see the traits. Arnold Jackson, I, I start judging my pigeons young. Arnold Jackson 
he, he has me looking at him in a total different light. Yeah. You see the characteristic early on, man. You, right. They're going to tell you what they yeah. are early on. And those are my favorite birds. You know, I have other favorites, but that's my ideal. It, it looks like that bird is that bird that, you know, when, when you're out at a fly and, you know, you probably hear hearing the moment of silent, you know, I mean, and, and you see, you hear it. All you need is 19 more of those right there. That black one is right. nice. Do you feel <laughs> right. do you feel that uh um at this point right now your percentage is, is up to where you're getting close to those 19 more birds? Or, or how do you see yourself uh, uh within your your breeding towards that? Okay, I'll tell you this: everything in my kits are related, mm -hmm. right? Everything is going to react the same to everything that I feed them. So from this point, it's just me as a coach taking the best ones from that and letting them call themselves and me, me doing my particular way that I am and putting together a team of family members that can work like that. I'm not far from it. It's just going to take that kind of work. I got to put some real coaching in out of the 120 birds that I'm training right now. I got to, I got to pick no favorites and I got to really, really watch the birds. That's going to put me to what you just asked me. I'm definitely capable. I'm, I'm definitely capable because of the family that I created. I, I, I think that's important. Um, you know, what you said there, um, because the birds are, are all similar and to some extent they think alike. If they've got the same type, they fly <laughs> alike, you know, and they kind of eat the same way. <laughs> so all that plays a big part. And I big think time. you find that over time. You know, you yeah. not something initially that you know when you first <laughs> going at it, right? You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. But then you got guys like Arnold Jackson and, and all the guys that you mentioned. They yeah. were they already knew all that, you know. So yes. they to show you that. And I asked that question initially in, in, in a lot of the interviews because I've been a lot of places like you, you know, where guys are oohing and on, and I'm thinking, what, what, you know, I'm, because once you see, once you see that pigeon that is fantastic, <laughs> you never forget it. And, you never forget it, man. Right, you never forget it, and that becomes your idea of yes. what a pigeon is supposed to do, and everything else could be okay. But it's not that. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, it will mess you up, man. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, no and, doubt and, about it. You know, and, and you know yeah. what? That's the key too. That um, that going around, man, and checking these birds out, other yeah. than your backyard, it's it's yes. I'm telling you, man. I've I've gone to uh, um Ohio and Kentucky, and and like you said earlier, a lot of a lot of people are. We're after the movement, you know, not not necessarily the movement, but they all work it together. I went over there and then things were separating, man. It, it was <laughs> to the point where like if there's a 10 bird break, you could literally be like one, two, three, four, five, six, two, seven, eight, nine, ten. Boom, ten. <laughs> Don't you love time, that? It gave yeah. you time to count versus Come on, to, man. yeah, versus to breaking and going back together, like, wait a minute, how many were there? You know what right. I mean? Because yeah. you don't know if it was a flutter, a turn. Right. You know, yes. yeah. And I was at some, to, go ahead. I'm sorry. At some point, a kid like that, all you're counting now is what don't go. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's when you're doing good, man. That's right. That's you so. Know, you know, you know well, go ahead, I remember see. at my peak, man. You know, my mother, rest in peace. My mother helped me put together the best kid I ever flew. I have to give her credit because she would want it. Uh -huh. You know, she was irritating me by commenting like she knew what she was talking about. But I had to listen to her one day. So she was telling me I didn't realize she was paying that much attention. But uh -huh. she started telling me which I had an empty kit box and she started telling me which pigeons I need to take out and put in the empty kit box because they're better than the rest. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I started doing that. So I end up with 24 hens. Wow. Right. That at my peak, I was scoring 760, almost 800 points with. I was doing 400 and 500 over and over and over again, right? Mm -hmm. And the experience of creating a team like that and, and taking the time to put, put them over one at a time, 
you know, you want to see them roll every day. You want to see it all the time once you get to that point. But having the patience and the maturity to do what my mom said, to put those birds, I'll never forget that experience. So I'm, I can't wait till the birds start understanding what their purpose is for me to start doing that. Because it's going to be trouble. It's going to be yeah. trouble in Texas, man. So, sometimes <laughs> it's, it's going to be trouble. Sometimes our problem could be that we're too much in a rush to do that. And we just want, we see one, we keep on flying and we burn them out or let yeah, the hogs yeah. take them or whatever. You know what I mean? It's like, we don't have patience in to, to, to create that, you know what I mean? And, and a yeah. lot of us always think, especially those that are starting in new that the first year they're going to put up a dynamite kit and it don't work that way. You know, Sometimes. you got to, you got to learn sometimes. Yeah. Birds. Right. Right. <laughs> you got to learn the birds. You got to learn how to, you got to learn how to fly. Yeah. You got to learn what, what, what being able to fly a team is. See, this is where Keith London comes in at. Right. If you don't have Keith London in your blood, I'm going to beat you. Right. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> I got Keith London in me. You get what I'm saying? I got Bobby Wilson in me. Bobby right. Wilson is, he's like my, trainer that 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 gonna train you even if you don't want to be trained you know right, what i'm saying right, right he 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 wants me to be good whether he likes it or not so he hammers me with shit you know he's just always on me man and i appreciate it because it's only priming me for my intention when i came here and that was to win you know to win big uh -huh. to finally make a name for myself so that guy guys know that when steve says that he's selling some birds that it's not a it's not a game over here right. when you right. when you get 20 birds from steve you honestly can take those birds let them mature and start you something very nice over there you get what i'm saying that's what i'm trying to do i want to help elevate the game to another level i don't want to sell pigeons to people who just want birds i really want to sell pigeons to people who want to compete at a high level because the the work that i've put in over 25 years was a competition-based family you know yeah. you can have them for fun that's fine but they're definitely based for competition they're built for competition so i would love to have my name in that light as a legacy, when you buy Stephen Russell pigeons, it's like Norm Reed. When you get Norm yeah. Reed's pigeons, you're getting ready to compete at well, a high level. Well, I period. think I think uh, um, we need more of that. You know, more guys like yeah. you that have be, been putting their time in. And even though you know you got you put a price to them, it doesn't matter, man. Like like me, yeah. I'll pay for a top notch pigeon because. I don't want to waste my time with with somebody that's supposed yes, to pigeons from this guy from this guy and hasn't put in the work. So I mean, yeah. it, we we need to be more competitive with each other out here, and I think that's one of the ways we need to fix that. Is yeah, to have guys like you that are putting in the work and willing to to put them out there. You know what I mean? Yeah, and you know, it's it's like um, I don't when I first got into this this business of rollers that we're in it was such a re a, a, a heaven away from the music business yeah you know yeah. i was so fortunate to be around eddie scott and ray von hall i can't even tell you how valuable ray von was to me and what he educated me with i can't tell you the times that i stopped at eddie scott's house and sat there and listened to him tell me about what he did with his birds and you know, you take jewels from people if you're smart. And yeah. thank God for my mom. She she created a smart kid that was, even as an adult, I'm smart enough to still take and learn because I want to I want to be that much better than the next guy in the gentleman fashion. Like, I don't mind guys talking shit. You know, I know this guy's a real, you know, get, guys get offended by me really, really quick. And I don't know why, because I thought this I thought we were in this competing thing you know what i'm saying yeah, so right. i want to kick your ass but i want to shake your hand and do lunch and talk about pigeons too right right you right, get what i'm right, saying right, but when the right. judge comes when the judge comes i'm only if you put your pigeons up i'm only rooting for your pigeons personally the pigeon right. itself not you i yeah. love the pigeon <laughs> right. but i'm not rooting for you over me <laughs> you know i want to kick your tail i want to be Right, I want to beat you. <laughs> Man, right. I want to beat you. 
That's right. That's what I thought this thing was about. And I still had that energy. And I noticed that guys, when Steve Russell says something, they get offended real quick, man. And yeah. it's not like I've done any success writing. I'm right. getting ready to start putting my foot in right. some tail. But if you're offended by me now, you're going to be super offended by me once I start winning. <laughs> I'm not an asshole. I'm a, if, if you know me, you know me. I'm a good guy. I yeah. love everybody, yeah. bro. Yeah, right. You know, and it's all in fun. You talk to G. Will, you talk to the people who've been around me, they'll tell you it's none of that, you know, yeah. it's none of that crap yeah. when it well, comes you know, to Steve. You know, like you said, yeah. it, it is it is all in fun. It it is all in fun, yeah. but you always got to put that that uh, that uh picture around like like it, it, like you're cool, it's all for fun, but in reality, it's a lot of hard work. And and a lot of people <laughs> want to know, like, man, what is Steve doing, man? You know, yeah. it, you know, yeah. it, it, you know, you 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 got that like people like, man, check out those birds, man. What is he yeah. doing? How is he feeding them? What is he pairing? Yeah. Or you know, what I mean, yeah. and all that is just plain and simple hard work. So yes, that's part of yeah. the fun right there, is the hard work as well, you know. Right. Yeah. And, and, and for me as a creator with this family, you know, like it's, it's no secret that it's Norm, Jerry out and back in it. And of course my Juan Navarro, but the science behind the time you put into your birds, like you said, man, that is key. Yeah. I can take, you can get birds from different guys and never have any success. You can take it and create you something nice, or you can take it and create your own thing. Man. Scientifically bake your own cake, man, that tastes different than other people's cake. And that's what I like to pride myself on is knowing that I've created something on purpose. I flew birds. I when I when I spent my money, I came home and I flew competitions. I flew birds for two years, took those birds knowing what they had proven to be to yeah. create something. That bird that I said that I started my family with Kobe, he flew from a youngster until he was no more. He flew two, three years before I took him in to create the family. Right. You know what I'm saying? And 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 you're talking about creating your family right now. And um <clears throat> let's just say, you know. I, I, I'm starting in a hobby and I said, man, you know what? This dude sounds like he knows what he's talking about right here. Yes. And he's the guy I'm going to call. So it, it, you know, a word of advice, they say, if I wanted to come and get birds off of you, what would you tell this person? What is the ideal amount of pairs that he must get to, to create or to keep on cultivating what you have cultivated and create his family? So, you know, give it, you know, just a okay. heads up, you know, what they need to do. Uh, the first thing I would do if somebody said, hey, Steve, man, I heard you. I want to buy I, I want to buy your birds. I would be excited for them, first of all, because I put so much work into it. I would be excited that they noticed it because they're getting ready to get some really, really good birds. And the first thing that I would talk to them about is the maintenance and training. You know, I, I I would want them to know that just because you're buying these birds don't mean that it doesn't mean that you're just going to automatically just be scoring and doing all these things. Because if you're not a good coach, you're going to have the wrong players in at the wrong times, at the wrong positions. Right. And see, most guys think that you can put 20, 30 birds together and you got you a kit. I got four kits of 30 birds a piece that I'm looking to make one kit out of. You get what I'm saying? That's the difference between good and great. So I would I would I would definitely get somebody who's going to buy into this family, get them educated on what to feed them, what the characteristics are. If you take too much of this to this at this point, it's not too good. You should do this. You should balance it like this. I would give them birds that balance the same way that I'm breeding. I would give them birds to balance at their home so that they're successful, you know, birds not slamming all over the place. I might get two birds to slam in a year out of 200 pigeons. I might get three. So my my percentages are high in the quality. I, even though good and bad traits come, I didn't start with birds who carry those super bad traits that pop back in. Like I said, if I make a wrong mating and something's too hot, I'm going to know it. It's going to be one out of a bunch that comes slamming down. So I would just make the person familiar with my birds. And I would, I would, I would like for them to come and watch my, you know, watch what they're 
buying into as they're flying i can tell them okay see you got the uncle to that you got the brother to that i would like to show them what they got and let them experience the birds um if if not that i would just educate them on the background of the birds starting from jerry and norm i I would go all the way back Um, my pedigrees for my birds go all the way back and when i say all the way back all the way back i have my all of my birds are fully pedigreed and that doesn't mean anything as far as the quality but for me building a family means everything because when johnny smith gave me information and gave me this thing i was able to build from that and it's helped me not make as many mistakes as a breeder as i could have made doing the wrong thing and the wrong combinations and you know doing something that jerry that they already did already you know i didn't do that i didn't take johnny smith's birds and go and try to recreate the wheel with with him and jerry i didn't do that i took the best of what i got and put it together to make my own from different from a couple different people you know and then i still add i always keep my Juan navarro i never keep it a secret i always add my one and that's gonna give me an edge over you sorry (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, Johnny, Johnny's an, an encyclopedia, man. Oh Johnny, man. Johnny Johnny knows a lot. Really. Yeah, we, we actually need to get him on here too, man. Hey, yeah. Johnny's ridiculous, bro. <laughs> yeah, I I know. I mean, I've talked to him a number of times, and every time I walk away, I'm amazed, man. Because the yeah. dude he knows. He uh, yeah. and he's he's tight. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. When it really comes down to it, he's tight, like his pigeons are. Um, Listen, John and Robert Parker as well. Robert too, yeah, Robert, you're right. I I love those guys, man. You know, Johnny, Robert Parker bred Kobe's granddad, Johnny Smith bred Kobe's dad. Oh, wow. Wow. You get what I'm saying? (laughs) So I'm definitely a Higginite. I'm definitely in that family. Uh, you know, but I took a Ray Fisher bird. Well, Jesse Comer, I give Jesse the credit. Jesse came, Jesse Comer gave me a fantastic pair. Uh-huh. He took uh-huh. a Ray Fisher bird, uh, uh, a Higgins pigeon that was had some Houghton in it as a, you know, brought a Houghton in on top of it. Norm in the background. And um, it, I was able to create an amazing thing from it to this day. I tell you, the style that I started with, I still have. I just have to do the work. Now mm-hmm. it's time for me to be the coach and put together kits that you guys would love to see, you know, and that's where I'm at today, you know. Nice. What, what, what do you find on, on your birds that, uh, that you, that you see a higher percentage that are, are better performance? Yeah. you 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 see that your cocks are better or your hens. And if so, do you see that you producing enough? You know, some people say, man, I, my, my hens, they're they're the astound, uh, outstanding, but I don't get enough of them. You know what I mean? Uh, how do you, how do you how would you um, determine that? Uh, in my family, I have a a decent balance. I'm gonna get an edge to the hens because I just like hens better. I love the cocks, but I like I'm a favor. I'm a hen. I favor my hens. They perform better. They're smarter to me uh they're they're just better to manage than the cocks but i have a balance of both i'm gonna get really nice cocks spinning their tails off and i'm gonna have hens that's spinning their tails off that might be a little edge because juan navarro taught me about type early on and i never forgot it so i always with with what norm reed taught me about selection i've been able to condense my birds down and my hens really take to that and they're really small and typey and still have the muscle like the cocks you know so i I, i'm gonna favor the hens but i I have a a good mixture but i favor my hens over the cocks would you fly them uh together or you separate them or just house them separated and fly them together what's your your routine on that um, I house them separate. Once once they get of age and I see that the cocks are becoming cocky, I, I house them separate. And as I'm while I'm training them and getting them to know kits and know all of that stuff, I don't fly them together. 
The only time I start flying together is based on team time. When it's time for me to pick my A team, only the best cocks, only the best hands. I'm not going to have a favorite at that point. It's going to be the best performers flying in the teams together when I finally decide to make the number one team. But until then, I don't want the cocks disturbing the hens mentality, clapping at them. And I, I just don't, I don't want that kind of, I want them to know you're here to fly. You once, once uh, it's time to start training, the feed automatically drops way down. So it's a mental shock that they go through anyway. And I don't need the cocks. I don't need that sexual thing in her. I don't like that when I'm yeah. training my pigeons, bro. I'm strict. I, I don't like that at all. So Steve, once you pick your, once you pick birds for the 18, do you keep them separated? Um, you know, the cocks and hens, or do you uh, keep them all in the same kid box? Um, once I pick the A-team, they're all in the same box. Um, what I've noticed on my program, once I get you on the the the, the line that you're on with me, you don't mm -hmm. have enough energy for croaking and none of that shit. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so you when don't they, want nothing so, but to sit in that little box, yeah. you know? So when they land, they just want to go in and rest. Uh, no no chasing it. around hens or anything. Uh. Right. You don't have the energy, not in my box, you know? And I got that from Keith London. Right. Yeah. Keith London right. taught me that I would I would see Keith's birds roll so vicious and strong, but when you look in the box, they look like they they they're like they're unnourished, kind of. You know, yeah, they, they call her a roller fit. They're roller fit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a, you know, there's an art to that. That's yeah. an art. Yeah, you know, it's an art to, to it. it. To that point. Yeah, and most people don't make it to that point because. Because, of the, like you said, you look in there and the birds are like, you're like, whoa, <laughs> what are they? They don't look too good, you know? Yeah. But, you know, but I've seen the same thing and then they come out and just pound it, you know? So, yeah. 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 Keith London blew my mind with that. You know, I would look at his birds and say, damn, this is, you know, these are the birds that's flying. He said, yeah, just watch, you know, because Keith got his shit together, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, Keith, he, he, Keith London has his shit together. I really admire him as a pigeon guy. Um, you know, he'll let his birds out. And like I say, man, his birds, you know, all, his birds are deep. His birds are not short. Mm -hmm. You know, you got birds that's rolling 20 feet, 25 feet, 30 feet, right in your face on a cloudy day, overcast day. You see everything. Yeah. You know, I've seen Keith London score close to a thousand points before. Yeah. You know, I've seen Art Martinez. Uh, now, Art's birds are shorter but I've seen Art put up a kit that'll kick anybody's ass on a good day. Really? You know? yeah, he's, oh, man. He's, he's very knowledgeable, oh. too, man. Oh, man. It's just, you know, I, I'm so happy, to be honest. It's I like to compare it to my music life. I was so blessed that my mom exposed me to great music. As a kid listening to her music, I'm so happy that I love what she loved because it helps me as a songwriter today. It is just like with my pigeons. I'm so happy for Jerry Higgins, Norm Reed, Barnett Bruley, Eddie Scott, Bobby Wilson, Keith London, Kevin McCray, Juan Navarro, Derek McGee, Craig Wiggs, uh, you, you know, uh, Rayvon Hall, uh, Arnold Jackson. I'm, I'm so thankful for those guys because I'm all of them. And people wonder why I'm so confident in what I do with my pigeons. You, I'm made up of a lot of good dudes, man. Yeah. There's a lot of greatness in me as a pigeon guy that you might not have in you. And I'm not, that's not a bad thing, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but I carry, I carry uh, Higgins and, and Norm and, and Kevin McCray and Keith London and, and Bobby Wilson, the guys that I know that compete really tough. I carry that with me. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I know I get on their nerves because I'm more than them because I got them in me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I love it, man. I'm here to cause trouble. I'll be the Malcolm X of pigeons if I have to be. I, I'll be the trouble guy because I come to I come to make some noise. I come to bring some. I come to raise the standard up and not let it just become where the backyard mentality is the season of the roller competition because it shouldn't be that there's a world for both. When we step out to compete, it should be at high, high levels. And that's just what I stand on, man. Yeah. You know, well, there's no doubt about it. Uh, you know, I mean, there's a lot we can do. Um, we talk all the time, uh, Jerry and I, you know, about 
getting other people excited. You know, Jerry's ex Jerry's ex as ex as excited as you are. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, sometimes I see I see him go on. He's as excited as you are, and it's good to see that. It really is. Um, yeah, and I think it. I think it relates to young people. You know, when they see people that excited about something. Um, yeah. Do you do you have a a, a specific uh, feed program you use? You know, once you got your eighteen picked out, you get it ready um, for competition. Yeah, you know what I do is, man. Honestly, I do an experiment, man. I got this uh this program from Jerry years ago, where I'm on and off flying at the same time, changing feed mm -hmm. to see what they're gonna provide for me it's almost like me learning my birds this team just because this last team did this certain thing i don't treat them the same in that aspect yeah even though they're relatives i still gotta see what milo australian peas i gotta see what wheat i gotta see what the combinations do on a day after you've flown two days and you've been off a day I do that. It's, 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 it's tragic, man. You know, I do a whole science thing to just figure out where my best performance is going to come from. And it's hard to say exactly what that is, but while I'm training, um, I'm feeding Milo, um, wheat, uh, little Australian peas, just because I'm not too concerned about roll right away. That's right. not, I'm not, a, I'm not one of those guys that's waiting to see my squabs roll, bro. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just not into that. Yeah. I'd much rather see my birds spend weeks flying and figuring out what they're supposed to be doing because that's where I learn who I'm dealing with by watching them and their kit sensibility. Okay. okay. So I, I, I feed them food that's going to induce energy to fly. You know, I give them electrolytes. Because I just want them to fly for now and get used to kidding and flying together. I could care less about the role when I start training. Because you know it's there. The, the role is there. And, and when, they start, when they start, yeah, it, yeah. it's yeah. coming, man. So I, you, yeah. want, you want way more in place with these pigeons before that. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that's, that's what I'm on. Yeah. Well, it, I, I think that's, Jerry, we might have talked about this before. You know that very often each kid is just a little different. They're not. Yeah. They're similar, but they're a little different. They're not you the same. Yeah. You yeah. have or, to be able to read what the birds are yeah. doing. Or, or uh, not only that, but you might have them on point just right. And what's going to happen? What happened to me could happen to you. It, all of a sudden, flying at se 75 degrees, the high just turned up to 102. And yeah. Dang, I had the birds right on the money. You know what? What the heck? So. You know, yes. Mike Mike Bolden uh, uh, always told me, or he's t he's told me that luck comes into hand too, and and at first I was like, no, nah, it's 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 more than luck. It's not luck. It's it's you gotta have them on point. But yeah, it, luck is yeah, a big. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's like a mixture of preparation, timing. Yeah. You know, um, uh, I, I I forgot to mention another mentor of mine, um, Willie Wright. Okay. Uh, one arm Willie. Uh, yeah. I can't leave him out of the bunch. He's the guys that I've mentioned, he's one of my heroes, actually. He taught me, again, I got really white, uh, Willie Wright in my system, too. <laughs> so, you know, uh, when you're dealing with these birds, you have to really psychologically, like Barnett Bruley is the one who got me psychologically. He He's the one that, he's the reason I can say, come here to my, come here, baby, to my birds, and they come. Uh, uh, he's that guy uh, Barnett uh, is a mental 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 guy when it comes to the pigeon and even with you feeding your birds and brushing your hand across them when you're putting your hand when you're feeding them on the tray creates a psychological mm -hmm. situation with you and the birds man most people don't know that yeah. you know yeah, you know, both people could care less about touching the birds while they're feeding. They don't even know that that's a psychological thing that you're yeah. doing with your birds. You know, so I'm just saying that to say that I take all that in consideration when I'm training the birds. When I start to train, and, and in the beginning, I'm really looking for those 
that are alike. I'm looking for those to identify those because everybody that flies alike in the beginning are going to be together. If you're a late flyer, you land early, you're all the early landers. If you if you're back in the back doing a little flip, trying to learn how to roll, you're going to be with all those that do that. Yeah. You know, that's how I deal with it. That's I start separating very early, letting the bird call themselves first before I started. Right. Because right. the way Jerry got me culling birds, man, it's like the more you call, the better you are. Yeah, right. you got you know? to, man. You know, and, and, and you know, at, at, you know, in the beginning, Ugh. I was like, I was too attached to them. And and, and I was <laughs> I was being weak, you know what I mean? Like, weak, oh, man, man. I, was, I was a softy, you know? Yeah, and then not not until I started calling hard and and just man, one year I just I had a hefty bag, you know, and I had it filled it up, <laughs> and the I ain't lying to you. The next year I started seeing, you know, ten, twelve, boom. I was like, oh my god, that's what it, I was, I was <laughs> that's, holding that's on to. To I was yeah. holding on to those birds that that I was like, man, I'm gonna give them another chance. I'm gonna give them another right. Chance. Man, I, no more chances back here, man. That's it. <laughs> that's over. Yeah, it's you know, over, man. <laughs> yeah. I was in shock when I saw Jerry, how Jerry dealt with the pigeons. I was in shock. Yeah. You know, nice. but but when he told me what he told me about Cullen, when I started scoring that six something, 650, 680, 500, 524, 84, when I started doing that, I was like, damn, the quicker you get rid of the, <laughs> yeah. the problem. When you get yeah. rid of those lacquers, yeah. all you're left to deal with is the elite pigeons. I like that feeling, you know. Yeah. Now, do, so, do, do you do you tend to um like when it comes down to your breeding, do you, when 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 is the time to replace what you're working with? I mean, uh, do you keep the same breeders or click pairs together? Or do you look for the new that's coming in? What's your process on saying, you know what? I'm a um this bird right here is gonna advance from the kit box to the breeders, and this one's gonna retire. How do you do that for those that that want to know? You know when when is good to replace and not? Well, it's, well for me, you know, uh, I like replacing birds when I can help somebody out with them, and I have something coming in to replace them. Uh, lately, I haven't. I don't have a market for Steve Russell pigeons as of yet, so I still have really good breeders that flew in 2016 and 17 that were amazing. So for me right now, in Texas, I'm breeding those old guys with these younger hens that I bred last year. I'm I'm keeping that old blood. I'm keeping it current mm -hmm. because I've yet to show it. You know, I've yet to get down with it. So. I do have a whole line of new blood, young cocks, but uh, Bobby Wilson uh, put me on to something. You know, he gave me an idea to take my older cocks with the younger hens. And uh, I did it and I'm liking, the, I'm liking what I see. I, I just like it, you know? So I'm creating a lot of kits with the older cocks with the younger hens and vice versa. But on a normal basis, you should be replacing as you bring in. You know, you bring in a good cock, you should be replacing that cock. You know, it's no need to hold on to those birds. Um, and it's hypocritical for me because I have all my birds still. But just as an advice outside of what I'm doing right now currently, you should be bringing in to replace. You know, um, the whole goal is to keep moving forward. Yeah, you want to move yeah. forward from those those great birds. Mm -hmm. You want to move forward and get sons that you've created that are better. Yeah, You know, you want to keep it moving forward. So that's the goal. But for me, like I said, right now, um, uh, I'm partial to what I created, you know, so I'm just I'm I'm going to I'm going to keep the old guys around until there's somebody that I can push them to that's going to appreciate them and get something good out of them or they'll die here. You know, but hopefully after I score really big and the 11 bird fly or fall fly, whatever, People start to notice, like, okay, this guy, he's not a joke. I'll, I'll, I'll get some birds from him. I'll invest in his birds. You know, eventually it's gonna come. So, yeah. yeah. Stephen, you, you talked about Norm, Norm Reed a bit, and some of the things he talked to you about breeding. And I know Norm was big on color bal balancing in his <laughs> family of birds. Um, do you, do you do some of that? Some of the color balancing. All of it. Now I am a rule breaker. 
My entire family of my black sky dancers, I broke the rule of breeding black to black. Mm -hmm. um, I'm smart enough to bring checkers in. I'm not an idiot. You know, I bring black <laughs> check wife. You know, I know right. what I'm doing. But um, I, on a, on a normal basis, I breed the way Norm, you know, said was best with his birds. And I love the result. I love the balanced breed in Norm. But I'm so far down in his line now. Man, I can I can take two reds now and get check white flights. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm trying to say? So the balance is 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 right. in the family, but I do have my red TikTok on a black. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I do have my red models on on blue checks. You know, I do follow the pattern, you know, and the same thing with Jerry. I follow the basics of what they taught because, you know, you would have to be an idiot to experience Norm Reed's pigeons and not know that this guy knows exactly right. what he's doing. Right. Even taking Norm's pigeons to your pigeons, it, the quality that it brings to your birds, you would have to, unless you're completely egomaniac and don't give Norm his credit, you know where it's coming from, man. Mm -hmm. You know, I bred I bred Jerry's birds straight long enough to know their characteristics. I bred Jerry's birds, by, uh, Norm's birds by themselves to know their characteristics. So when I put them together, I know what I'm creating. I know what's bringing what to the table, you know, right. and following Norm's advice was some of the best it, best things that I did with these pigeons. And that's why I still have them to this day because of that balance that he was into. And even even past the the color balance the quality the feather quality norm was the one that showed me the different quality like you could see it with your eyes but you don't necessarily judge it right. norm norm showed me that if you want this this is what you breed quality wise feather quality wise to this to get this just the just scientific stuff man you yeah. know yeah, yeah and yeah. i use it to this day bro right on right on yeah um, yeah, no, I mean, Norm talked about um, talked about that quite a bit when I met him, and um, it's something I've kind of always followed. Like you, I'm somewhat of a rule breaker too. You know, if something yeah. looks good to me, <laughs> and and I can envision what's what's going to come out of it, I'll definitely try it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not, there's an, uh, something that I realized over time. Um, and I think I heard it from the English guys, you know, where um, they take uh, young birds that are really doing well and they breed a couple rounds off them and stick them back in the kit, you know. Yeah, I've done that. Yeah. Yeah. And and um, I see the benefit of it, um, especially if you have hawk problems, you know, uh, big hawk problems, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I see the benefit of it uh, because you, maybe you get to prove out you know, uh, 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 ego. <laughs> you know, um, Norm, Norm kind of, uh, uh, you know, Steve Agent, you ever met? Talk to I Steve? never met him, but I know of him. Yes, I know of Steve Agent. Um, I, I've talked to Steve, Steve a number of times, and Steve still mm -hmm. practices, you know, color balancing and how everything he learned from, but Norm told, uh, told Steve, you know, that the birds were really inbred, you know. Um, but Steve, like you, like me, like all of us, he's a rule breaker too, you know. You know, I'll try something three or four times to see if it'll yeah. work. Just to see. Yeah, yeah. just to, I mean, something you got to do that, right? <laughs> yeah. That's the nature. That's our nature. Um, so competition-wise, when are you coming, man? We're looking for you. We're ready, ready, to, ready to get you in there. Well, um, I'm I'm in training right now as we speak. <clears throat> I missed the uh, I missed the World Cup this year. I wasn't able to get ready. Um, I have a lot of hawk problems here. No falcons, but I have four maybe four different types of predators. You know, I have a goss cooper. I have this other gray with red eyes hybrid type falcon like he's on the ground falcon thing man you know and i got these big red tails i got an orange red tail i got a spotted red tail 
so I'm able to fly. It's not an excuse because I'm 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 breeding. I have I'm breeding enough. I just decided to feed whoever and just breed, breed and fly. So um within the next few months, you know, I'm training, I'm training birds right now. So within the next couple months, I should have something on video showing, you know, I've been showing little teasers already of certain individuals that are just coming in, guys talking shit because the bird's sloppy. I'm like, okay, I don't mind being the sloppy guy because I'm the same guy gonna put a good video up too. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so. And you know what? Uh uh not not too many people put a video, so yeah. yeah, you know those you that put me? them up. Those that you put them up, me? no, they yeah. got they got what 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 they need to put. You know, <laughs> man, watch me, watch the videos that I put up so guys can see. You know what I'm saying? I'm 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 gonna definitely show. I'm definitely gonna put up and shut up. You know what I mean? That's yeah, my yeah, whole yeah. thing. I love for the pigeons to do the talking. I, I have no doubt about my capabilities with the family that I have. It's just about doing the work. Yeah. And I'm working on it right now. By this summer, I should have something really good to show. Um, by next year, I should be kicking ass. Right on, you know, right that's my plan. I came here, like I said, I came to Texas to win the World Cup. So once I do that, I want to come back on the show and 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 let everybody know, speak it into it works. You know what I'm saying? Nice. Right. <laughs> So Hello, Steve, do you see Bobby? You see Bobby in it? I mean, Bobby's in Texas now too, right? Uh, uh, you know, that's my buddy, man. He's he's my brother from another mother, man. We have a tumultuous relationship, you know, <laughs> but uh, we love each other unconditionally, nonetheless. Uh, I see him not so often, but often, you know, when he has time, I see him a lot. When I don't, you know, when I'm busy, we don't, but. We share in the pigeon game together. You know, he's my brother in pigeons. Um, we share the same family. I'm just now introducing some of it, you know, one of his birds into my family. I want to see, you know, if if he can add something over here. He's testing the same to see if I can add over there. So, we, you know, we're doing it together. You know, we got some plans to uh, get the magazine back popping strong. Yeah. Um, talk, um, talk, talking about that, you know, I even talked to him and, and I really – would like to sit, maybe have a have a little meet between me, you, and and Bobby. Let's get this okay. reality show going, man. You know? Yeah, well, you know, we already shot some footage. Yeah, so I want to, I want to, I know, I know, you know, I've been busy and all that, but let, let's yeah. get it on the professional level. I want to okay. get the reality going, the reality we show. We should get it going, man. And get the first I'll do everything going. I can on my end. Yeah. Um, like I said, we shot just a, a introduction of me, um, but yeah, we should do that, man. I yeah. think that's a great thing, man. Yeah, we'll do the first season, you know, maybe three states, and then we'll go from there. You know, the second season, we'll see who's willing to, to participate. On. You know, that'll be pretty cool. I think that's big, bro. That, that'll be something new to the hobby, you know what I mean? I love it. And and something to motivate, I would love to get kids attracted to it the way I was attracted to it, you know? Yeah, At yeah, seven, yeah, yeah. seven, eight years old, man, pigeons, that was so exciting. I know I didn't have phones with video games and stuff, but it, we're still human, man. It's got to be something about the pigeons that still can touch the heartstring of kids. And that's what I think a show like that will do, especially if we have in the show as well. Yeah. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. But we're I'm definitely, definitely on board with that. Yeah, okay, cool, cool. We've got to get it going. I mean, you know, um, we'll put it together for sure. We'll have another meet, and, and, and okay. we're, we're going to have to do that. Any... I know uh, we 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 uh, have another guy coming up here soon on on the on on the show today. Okay. But, uh, any anything you want to say to 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 the people out there? A word of advice. I know. Hey, those of you, he's the man. He's got it going on. He's got birds. He's looking for somebody to to work with him. And and if, if you really get some birds right here, man, there's there's Steve. You know. Yeah, um, I, I would like to, I've never been a pigeon seller, you know, I'm not into that, but I am at the place where I, I, I do have enough birds right now where I can, I can help somebody who, who really wants to compete on a good level. I do have birds that I could push out right now that could really set somebody up really, really good. Um, I, I, I leave that open to anybody who's interested and I understand it's time for me to show and prove. So that's what's happening. But I would just like to say, honestly, to all the pigeon guys, I love you guys, man. You guys have created something for me to survive 
and keep me alive when I thought I would die otherwise, you know? This has kept me alive, being able to call and talk pigeons with people. Uh, it's given me a, another life. And I just want to show my appreciation to everybody, you know, um, Keith London, Bobby Wilson, uh, rest in peace, Ray Vaughn, Eddie Scott, I love you so much. Arnold Jackson, I love you. Barnett Bruley, I love you. You already know you my freaking uncle, dad. Uh <laughs> Uh, Juan Navarro, I love you. Willie Wright, I love you. Um, Derek McGee, where you at? I love you. Uh, just all the guys, Craig Wiggs, I love you for introducing me to this man. Always respect. Uh, Bobby Clayton, where you at? It's time to show something, brother. But you know, I just want to give everybody respect. I love you guys, and uh, I really want to put some fire under guys you know so uh when you hear about me coming and you hear about me scoring them five and six you hear about me scoring the five and six hundred points you know i'm coming just to give you a little motivation that's all <laughs> <laughs> well, right on man well you know look it's just, it's it's good to beat you um we're looking forward to Same hearing here. your name again looking forward to having you on again and we're looking forward to see you fly man i mean it's always exciting you know to 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 get somebody you know in that's motivated that's willing to talk a little bit of shit yeah. to put them up hey them that's up, that's what the competition down, is about you know what i mean <laughs> hey i can't wait to show you guys i'm gonna definitely keep the videos up good or bad like i said i'm not ashamed to be at the bottom because i know how to rise so i'm gonna make sure you guys are seeing my progress so if it's, it takes motivation for somebody else if it helps somebody else get motivated that's what i'm here for and thanks for having me on the platform, man. I love you guys, man. I really appreciate the opportunity, man. Thank you so much for being on here as a guest, and uh, you know we're we're we're, we're going to be looking out, man. So I know <laughs> I know I mean I I could tell you right now, you know I've talked to a lot of fanciers, and and I know who are the passionate ones and the ones with knowledge. And I'm telling you right now, you 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 know you know a lot, and, man, and you're thank you're you. somebody to reckon with. You know what I mean? Watch out for this guy right here. Yeah, thank I got you, a good man. feeling for him, man. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. Appreciate you guys so much, man. I, look out. He's on his way. Franchise Roller Club. Baby, right, right up. Franchise, right. <laughs> All right, man. I love you, brother. Hey, love you guys, man. All right, right, right. Love you too, man. Take it easy. All right. Later. <laughs> Thanks for joining this episode of Roll Call. Let's give a round of applause to our special guest. And in closing, we want you to support promote and enjoy our special audience.